Welcome to today's virtual European experience. I'm Kathy Wood, founder of European Experiences, along with my husband Charlie, and we're glad you're with us today to travel from home. Today we'll be traveling to Italy, specifically to the beautiful Chianti region of Tuscany, where we'll be joined by our good friends Ariana Sini and Francesco Anaccini, and I'll tell you more about them in a minute. We have 67 people registered for today's program from Canada, Australia, South Africa, France, and the USA. Some of you have been on our Chianti experience trip, and you've met Francesco in the last couple of years, also Ariana. Um, but many of you are with us for the first time. We're happy to have everyone here. Now, just a few things about how this program will work. We're getting better at using Zoom, but we're coordinating today between two countries and three different locations, and if possible, we'll fumble a time or two. Thank you so much for your patience. Now, this is a Zoom webinar. You won't be visible. You'll just see those of us presenting and our visual aids. I'll be back later to help with a question and answer session and also to share some wrap-up information. If you have a question, you can type it in at any time using the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen, but we will respond to all questions at the end. At the end of the session, a short survey will pop up, and if you have time to complete it, that would be great. You'll also receive a link to the same survey tomorrow with a follow-up email. We do appreciate your feedback. Just please don't answer the survey twice. There's not a charge for any of these sessions, but we do want to recognize the time and effort of our presenters whose businesses have been seriously impacted by the pandemic. So if you enjoy the session and you can make a small donation, that would be wonderful. We suggest 10 to $20 and 100% of the donations for today's session will go to Ariana and Francesco. We have several different ways you could make a donation. Um, you can find information on our website at www.european-experiences.com forward slash payments, and I'll show this link again at the end of the program. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. We met Francesco over 10 years ago now when we went to Chianti to research our trip and he and his family have become very special to us over the years. We've hosted 13 groups in Chianti, and they've all enjoyed a very special afternoon at Vallone de Sessioni, where Francesco and his family welcome us for a memorable lunch and a wine tasting. We're just sorry we can't offer the wine tasting as part of today's program. We met Ariana and her husband Alessio about four years ago, soon after they started their travel company in Chianti. We found that we shared a very similar philosophy of travel and also that we worked with a lot of the same people in the area, including Francesco. Ariana was involved with our Chianti experience groups in 2018 and 2019. And now with Charlie's retirement, Ariana and Alessio are my co-leaders on the Chianti experience trip. We're looking forward to hosting groups again next year. So let me get off and I'll turn it over to Ariana and Francesco. Okay. Um... First of all, buongiorno a tutti, uh, and thanks, Kathy, for the wonderful introduction. Uh, I'm happy to share with you now a little work that I have been uh, doing in the past uh, uh, few days about uh, Tuscany, about this very special time of the year, which is called the Vendemia, so the harvest time. So let's get into it. Uh, I will be giving you a little introduction about myself and Francesco Su, he will introduce about himself um, and then we'll get into the details of this special time. Let's focus on the slideshow. I will we'll be stopping the, our video so that you can focus all of your attention into the, the slideshow. Allora, that's the title, Into the Vineyard, Celebrating Vendemia Harvest Time in Chianti. This um, is a beautiful picture of uh, me and, uh, and Francesco. Uh, a little bit of myself. My name is Ariana Cini, and together with my husband, as you have been seen just a, a second ago, we are the owners of KM Zero Tours, a small travel company uh, based in the county region where I was born, aimed at introducing travelers from all over the world to our best friends and favorite places uh, here in Tuscany. So our, the word KM Zero means zero distance, zero kilometers. And it basically means um, about allowing us to really get to know the people they're going to meet and to really get to know the places they're going to visit. So 
uh, to meet the families, to establish real relationship with, with the people and to, uh, to become friend, old friends. So to have special memories to, to cherish and to remember. I really hope to be able to see you all next soon together with Kathy. For now, I'm grateful to Kathy for the wonderful opportunity she's giving us to uh, share a little bit of our Tuscan region with you and to share about this very special time uh, we are having here in Tuscany and to let you understand a little bit what's going on in Tuscany right now. I'll give the word to Francesco um, for a second so that he can also introduce a little bit about himself. Francesco is a dear friend, as Kathy uh, said, he's a wonderful winemaker and he will be the protagonist of this uh, slideshow. So I'll give the word to him and I'll see you in a minute. Thank you. Hello to everyone and thank you to Katie for this opportunity. I'm Francesco uh, Anichini, I'm the owner of Pallone di Cecione. Mine is a very small uh, winery uh, family business located in Panzano in Chianti. It's a small village between uh, Siena and Florence. We have a uh, few hectares, we only have uh, four hectares, that means for you around 10 acres vines. We also have 700 olive trees. We work like organic uh, we, and also like biodynamic. So our work is completely artisanal and natural. And we, um, uh, I work there with, only with my parents, uh, with uh, Giuliano and Anna. So, so a little, a few words about um, the Golden Valley of Panzano. Here you can see a beautiful, beautiful videos um, I, I did just a week ago. Uh, Panzano in Chianti is a small hilltop medieval village, which is actually the, the, um, the birthplace of uh, Francesco, where the vineyard of Francesco is located. It is called the Golden Valley for the reason you can clearly see here. Uh, it is called Golden because now, especially in this moment, uh, vineyards start to change the color and change the leaf into this beautiful golden color, which gives the name to the whole valley. Now let's get a little bit into the pandemia um, and uh, the meaning which is um, involved in, in this special word. Um, uh, pandemia, first of all, uh, in, in Italian, it, just, it doesn't mean just harvest, but it specifically refers to the harvest of grapes. So it's not just a general word to say uh, raccolta, it really is just specifically for grapes. This is the first important thing for you to know. Then we have only one grape harvest each year, which in Tuscany usually happens in the fall. That means September, beginning of October. So we just finished the harvest right now. Vendemia doesn't, doesn't just refer to manual work, um, but it also means a wonderful celebration. It means a lot of uh, legends, traditions, uh, celebrations that we'll see in a minute. Uh, one thing before we go, we move forward, I would love to ask Francesco about this beautiful gentleman you see in this picture and if he can explain a, bit, a little bit about um, him. Uh, this gentleman is my, my father, he has, a, he has 85 years old and now he, you can see him very, very happy during the harvest time like every year. For him and for us, harvest is a special moment and like Arianna say is also is a, is a party because he is a re family reunion is the result uh, we can see the result after one year of our hard work so so you can see my father very happy to go up and down the vines to to with, with the basket that we will use for the for the grapes thank you now let's move forward and I would love to ask Francesco uh, one of the most uh, important questions. So which grapes are used for making the famous Chianti Chassi, which is the most famous wine of Chianti? So in our, in our region, uh, in, in, around my village, we produce the Chianti Classico. I also do that. For the Chianti Classico, Chianti Classico is a DOCG wine. So it's a wine with many, many rules on the production of it. The most important is to use minimum 80% of Sangiovese then uh, it can contain also maximum 20 very traditional grape like Canaiolo and Colorino. Canaiolo is the most historical uh, grape that we have in Chianti. And Colorino is something also very historical that give color to the wine, you can see from the name. We can also have the possibility to use the most trendy international varieties like Merlot or Cabernet Sauvignon, but this is the most traditional way to do Chianti Lassio in Sangiovese, Canaiolo 
in colorino and I do cantilassing in that way. Perfect. This is a beautiful picture which allows me to ask another question to Francesco. Uh, I would love to know how can you tell when those grapes are ready to be harvested? When, when is the day when you say, okay, now it's the time? So usually uh, the, the right time is when we have the, uh, the right sugar concentration and the right acid, acidity. So for us, uh, from the half of September, it's very important to go into the vines, to take some berries and to, to crash and to make analysis to the, to the laboratory. So to check uh, uh, the potential final alcohol with the sugar concentration and also the acidity. So this is very important to decide the right time to start with the harvest. It usually is uh, between the end of September, beginning of October. Perfect. Here you can see some beautiful pictures about a little preview of what you're going to, to understand more deeply in a minute. Let's uh, focus on the harvest, so what happens in the fields. Francesco, could you please share with us your vision, your approach of, about the harvest? So do you harvest by hand? Do you harvest with machineries? Uh, what exactly, what do you use? Like those bas baskets we see exactly, what, how, how do you use them? Could you please tell us a little bit more? And also, could you please tell us uh, about the, the, this beautiful picture in black and white we can see? So again, who are these people um, displayed? And if you can tell a little bit more. So here, yeah, first of all, it's important to know that in that picture you see my parents during an harvest from 1975. This is also uh, the label of the, the picture of the label of my Chianti Lassio that I decided to use when I start to bottle my, my wine. And here, uh, so we do the harvest with, uh, with a plastic basket. Um, in the, here in that picture uh, with my parents, uh, you can see very, very big basket. This was very heavy, so not so easy, especially for my mother to, to bring home. <laughs> And now we use uh, uh, the basket that you see on the right, the smaller one, with, uh, with some hole is, is to allow circulation of air and also to prevent from molds. So it's important to have this hole around the basket to, to prevent uh, mold. Uh, so in that, that picture of my parents is very, is very classic picture because you see, you can see my parents uh, uh, before to be owner of the property, with this big uh, plastic basket that in 1975 was one of the first plastic basket after many years where they used the wooden basket. And you, it's, it's a very classic picture also for the grapes you see inside the basket. Because here you can see also at the top, if you pay attention, some white grapes. In the past for the Chianti Glacio, there was also the possibility to add a very tiny percent of uh, white grapes, now only red. Perfect, thank you. Here you can see some videos um, about the harvest. We took those videos, you can see Alessio helping. We were all there all together. It has been such a fun day. This is the moment, uh, Francesco, this is when I believe after the harvest, when you, 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 you put the, all those baskets into the truck now and then and then you, you 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 take them to the to the seller is it correct yes this is the time to bring uh, the basket at home full of grapes and here on the right you can see again my father doing directly the the harvest so selecting as you can see it's all done by hand so you don't really use the, the the tractor you use the tractor just to carry those baskets but not really for the harvest completely manual, manual work. We don't use machine. We don't have, uh, uh, we, we want to do that also to select in a better way the, the, the grapes. Yeah, that's for sure. Here you can see Giuliano again, Francesco's father. He really, he was so proud of those bunch of grapes. He thought they were extremely beautiful and he wanted me uh, to, to take a video of them because he said they were very, very special. That's all, that's why I wanted to add this we, we move on, so let's say now you understood a little bit what happens in the fields, then let's see now the next step, what happens next. 
So after, so when we go, we go home, we, uh, we have a special machine that makes separation between skin of the, of the grapes and the, uh, the stem. So here you can see the, the rest of the stems. And then the grapes, uh, the grapes without stems go inside the special, we, we, with the help of this machine, we go inside special steel tanks for the beginning of the fermentation process which go on for about uh, two, three weeks for Sangiovese uh, grapes. And here you can, you can see me on the left. Uh, I'm doing this, uh, this, this work that is very, very important uh, at the beginning of the fermentation. So I'm pumping over the wine. Uh, it's important for the wine, it's, it's very, very important to go uh, more and more in touch with the skin uh, to have extraction of uh, color, aromas, and, uh, and, and everything, tannin and everything. It's very, very important to do that uh, at the beginning of the fermentation for the first 10 days, around uh, three, uh, four, four times per day. Then uh, at the end of fermentation is enough to do that for one or two times. On the right, you can see me checking the, the sugar, uh, because uh, we have this very simple system, this very special instrument that step by step from the beginning of fermentation go down, and when you get to zero, so when the level is completely down, it means that the sugar has completely turned into alcohol. So it's the time to separate again the skin from the juice and the wine. Perfect, thank you. What, what happens here? What, what, it, what can you tell us about these images? Here is uh, the step uh, later. So it's when we are separating the skin. So we, 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 we put the, the wine in another uh, steel tank. And then with the, with the final skin, uh, we take out from the tank and we, do, uh, we press to have some more, we call it svinatura, raking. So it's the last extraction that we can have uh, out of this, this skin. is a way to have some more wine, some more everyday wine. And this is the, this is the press that I use, a uh, very, very old press, uh, also with my shoes. <laughs> and uh, and uh, this is, uh, uh, yes, this is important to have, we can drink anti-classico every day, so we need to have also uh, like an everyday wine, more easy uh, uh, to drink, a uh, little bit lower for sure quality than Chianti Class. Perfect. So here, Binaccia. What yeah. about this image? Because it's not finished as far as I can understand, correct? There is still something you can do with these skins. At this point, they're completely dry because the wine has been going out completely um, from the first and then the second press, but then what happens now to those dry skins? Yes, here you can see the dry completely skin. This is the last step for the, for the skin. With that kind of skin, we, we can we have two opportunities. So we can bring the skin to a distillery to make some grappa, that is a distillate. It's a very heavy digestive uh, liquor. <laughs> And uh, we can also decide, I, very often I, I take this decision, we can also decide to, to use it like compost to, to fertilize the, the vines, for example. Wonderful. So there's nothing left. Eh? No. There's, so um, now uh, I would love to introduce another, about another wonderful product and very traditional product we have in Chianti, which is called the Vin Santo. Some of you may have already heard about this name, some others not. It is a wonderful Tuscan tradition. This beautiful room you can see here, it is called the Vin Santaya, of course, taking the name from Vin Santo, where those beautiful grapes are uh, hanged to dry for several months. So those grapes, we uh, understood together with Francesco that Tuscany and especially the Chianti region is mostly famous for red wines. So, so the Chianti Hasica red, you, you have seen mostly all the pictures talking about the reds. But we do also have some whites and those whites um, are the Trebbiano and the Malvasia here. You, you can read the names. Trebbiano and Malvasia are two um, very important Tuscan 
white varieties, which are used for making a dessert wine, which is called the Vin Santo. Vin Santo is made of two different words, Vino Santo, Vino, wine, santo, saint, the holy wine. Why it is called holy wine? Because it was used during the religious mass at the beginning. As you can see here, there's this gentleman who is hanging those grapes. Those grapes, they are harvested at the same time of the other grapes. But then the difference is, instead of doing all the process you have seen together with Francesco in the previous slides, they are instead hanged to dry from September until December, until Christmas time. Then at that time, uh, in this beautiful Vinsantaya room, it's a special room just for that purpose. And then they are aged in these caratelli. Caratelli, you can see them a little bit in the, in the background of the picture. They are small little barrels. And they have that specific name because they are barrels which are used just for the Vinsanto. And they need to age them there for many years, like for five years. During the drying process, the sugar is concentrated because the, the grapes, they lose the majority part of the water. And so the sugar is very concentrated. And then it aged for such a long time that it becomes like honey. Here you can see it. it's a beautiful golden honey color. Very beautiful, very uh, rich. The taste is fantastic because it's sweet, but it's not too sweet because again, there's no added sugar. It's just the natural sugar containing the grapes. And here you can see this is an icon, iconic picture uh, of uh, Tuscany, which is uh, a timeless Tuscan tradition, Cantucci and Vinsanto. The Cantucci, you can see them here. They are what most of the people know as biscotti, but we have a specific name for that. They are almond cookies, hard biscotti. And here you can see what we do in Tuscany with them. We basically dip them into the uh, Vinsanto because they are hard. So by, by dipping them in the Vinsanto, they become a little bit more soft and then we eat them. And this is like a perfect combination. Uh, it is, um, you, can, you can find it if you come here to Tuscany in any Sartoria, in any restaurant, and in every single Tuscan family has one bottle of Vinsanto to be open. For sure, the big time is Christmas, but then any occasion is a good one for Santo. Then here we, at this point, we told you a little bit about the more specific uh, steps of the harvest. Now let's talk about the romantic and uh, uh, side of the of the harvest, which is the big fest. The fest in Italian means a celebration. It's as Francesco said, it is uh, the result of the work of a whole year so it's uh, it's every all the efforts the tension because then every year is different uh, every year is a challenge uh, one year there's a wild boar one year is the uh, drought uh, one year is raining too much one year is the hail so there's always uh, some challenges it's never an easy work and so once finally the harvest is done people of course are happy they relax and they want to celebrate so here you can see me pretending to be a vignola <laughs> So presenting to be a more winemaker and together with uh, Giuliano, who is the real winemaker, here just having fun. At that time of the year, the weather is still very beautiful. So again, we tend to harvest with t-shirt. This picture is pre-COVID times, of course. This year, unfortunately, we couldn't gather and celebrate in such big groups, but um, we really hope to be able to come back soon to those big parties and big celebrations all together. Here again, uh, beautiful long tables, which are usually um, organized after the, um, after the harvest with a beautiful decoration. So you see the grapevines, which adorn the table. And then here many people, again, all the big groups which are busy helping with the harvest. And of course they have the, the prize and the reward of uh, enjoying the wine and the food uh, all together. This is another romantic uh, um, uh, thing that I'm sure most of you uh, have in, in their mind. Once upon a time, farmers used to stomp the grapes with their, the grapes with their feet. Uh, so let's say now uh, it is, first of all, a fun and for sure experience. Uh, some farmers uh, still offer it um, as an experience, let's say, for the visitors who come, they can have fun and do it. But here, we go back to uh, the specific, um, uh, let's say, case of uh, Francesco's Vineyard, and you see that Giuliano, who is not a, a traveler, who is a local, uh, he is actually doing the same. So I would love to, uh, to ask Francesco if he can explain a little bit what Giuliano is doing, uh, if he's just playing, or if it, that is really a part of the work which needs to be done. 
So this is the, the real work. <laughs> this is my, my father that is uh, pressing uh, the, the, the skin of the grapes. When we show you before that it's very important to, to feel uh, this, this press, to have more uh, everyday wine. And it's important to, to, my father is doing that uh, to have the possibility to add more and more grapes, so uh, more and more skin. So it's important to feel completely as impressing to help the machine to press in the, in the best way. Perfect, thank you. So now something else about um, uh, the harvest, but again, something instead of romantic this time, something delicious. Uh, to tell you this gentleman here is Beppe. He's the baker from the village where uh, both Francesca and I live. Uh, so it is actually thanks to him that uh, Francesca and I, uh, we, we know each other. And uh, uh, he is using actually for making this dessert, now I will tell you everything about it. Uh, he has been using the grapes from Francesco's vineyard. So again, the sense of community we have here is extremely strong and is uh, part of the reason why we love to be here and uh, uh, and uh, let's say that that's part of the reason why Chianti is so special. This dessert is a special seasonal dessert you can find only in this time of year and it's called Schiacciata con l'uva or grape focaccia. I will tell you something about it. First step, flatten the dough and add in the grapes. Here you can see Mette is flattening the dough uh, with, with his uh, hands um, and here he is gently putting the, the grapes on it okay so it's really like a grape focaccia you really use the the grapes uh, which are usually used for for wine then you add the sugar and eggs the uh of course the sugar is because it's a dessert um the eggs to make it crispy here is when pepe puts the um focaccia in the oven you also put rosemary and olive oil which is unusual for uh, dessert, so it's a sweet, savory. Again, in Tuscany, we never have two sweet things. It's always a balance between the sweet and savory. Here, you see the focaccia is ready. You see all this crispy and golden, uh, thanks to the eggs. And this is how we serve it, uh, together with rosemary and, of course, more sugar on top. And this is called grape focaccia, and it's a specialty. Something else about, again, the romantic side of the harvest uh, is, uh, the, again, the celebration. Vendemia also means festival. It's plenty of festivals during this time of the year. Again, people want to celebrate and, you know, it brings also good luck for the new vintage. And um, this uh, is um, one of the most important historical wine festivals we have in Chianti, which is the Festa dell'Uva in Impruneta. Here, this is the main piazza of Impronesa. We, whoever will be joining us in June uh, with Kathy, uh, you will be passing through this village because the olive oil farm we will visit is located here and also we'll be having a, a fun experience uh, visiting a kiln terracotta factory, which is the other big production of Impronesa. So um, you, wh whoever will be here, you will be having the opportunity to see it for real. For now, Let's uh, see these beautiful pictures. Here you can see uh, in Pronesa, it's a small village in, in, in Chianti. During this um, festival, it is divided into several rioni. Rione means neighborhood. In Siena, you have the Contrada. You will learn all about it uh, once you're here. Um, the Contrade are, again, the neighborhoods uh, which are important for the Palio, which is this horse race, uh, which makes Siena very famous. Um, and it's a tradition since the Middle Ages. So also in this case, at a much uh, smaller uh, scale, they divide uh, these small villages into several neighborhoods, rioni, and then each rione will build a cart. And the cart uh, will display beautiful uh, designs uh, and um, events, uh, um, costumes, uh, all of course having the theme of the grapes. And then they have a competition in a way, in a good way, let's say in a friendly way. And then of course there is a winner, lots of celebration, etc. And this happens the last uh, uh, Sunday of uh, every September. Here you can see more pictures. Uh, here of course the costumes, they represent the grape leaves. And uh, here, of course, they represent the grapes. It is very beautiful every year. Of course, uh, there are new uh, designs. Uh, here, uh, you can see other wine festivals, um, which is one is the Wine Expo in Greve, and the other one is Vino Albino in Panzano in Pianti. 
Uh, here you can see this is the main piazza of Greve in Chianti, which is very beautiful. And here you can see all the traditional costumes of people who are doing a little parade before the event starts. Here, that's another beautiful thing, the, the flag wavers. It's a tradition which goes back to the Middle Ages. Uh, very beautiful on these events. Of course, they want to show uh, the tradition. And so uh, it's, it's how, let's say, they uh, open an annual event. And here, I'm sure you recognize someone at this point. So again, I will leave the word to Francesco. Francesco attends every single year uh, both of these festivals in Fanzano in Chianti and in Greve. And I would love to hear about his, um, what does he think, how is the feeling of being on those festivals and uh, um, let's say how it has been to be there every single year and, uh, and to learn a little bit about his perspective. So yeah, this is uh, for me to, 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 this is like a really like a big celebration because we have the possibility to, to share opinion with people from over the world. So with normal condition, we can meet a lot of people and share with them, uh, uh, let them taste our wine and to, to have back their opinion. So it's a very, very funny, very, uh, it's also, it's, it's our time because we are working, but it's very, very, very funny time. And, and here you can see me, during the, the festival in Panzano, in the Mass Square, with my father on the right and with my mom. Here you, I think you don't see before, but here on the left, you can see also my mom, Anna. And they are always with me to, to help me during all the year. So they are, they are a big support, uh, my special helper and my special workers. Thank you. So. We hope that you have enjoyed uh, this little um, introduction about uh, who we are and, uh, and uh, the, uh, let's say, what has been happening here. We have been all busy in this week and we have been uh, sharing a little bit what have been doing uh, until, until now with the harvest. I hope you have appreciated and I would love to, to, to give the word back to Kathy. Um, and I'm here. That Mariana, Francesco, that was wonderful. Thank you. Um, we do have a couple of questions, and if anyone else has a question, you could just uh, type it in. Um, I'll take the question first from Bruce, and uh, Bruce was with us uh, two years ago, and he asked uh, Francesco, is it better to buy your wine through you um, or through the wine stores who have your wines in the USA? Uh, it's better to, to, to wine from me directly so I can do I can try to do a good price <laughs> it's possible to buy directly to send me yeah so Francesco has been able to offer some um, specials uh, for us this year and if you are interested in ordering wine directly from Francesco um, please just email me I'll show my email address at the end and I'll send you the information um, it is possible to buy here through um, Astor Wine, but I think uh, Francesco would do his best to give a very good price, even with the shipping. We've, we've ordered some wine from Francesco this year, and it uh, gives us a little taste of uh, Chianti from home. Um, Ruth also asked, um, Francesco, about your wines. What, are, what do you think are the differences between your 2017 and 2018 Chianti Classico vintages? So yeah, yeah, in my work every year we have, <coughs> excuse me, we have a lot of differences because you know, <coughs> I work very, very, very natural, very artisanal. So we don't add any selected yeast for the fermentation. We don't add anything to the, to the wine. So we are completely dependent from the weather condition from our work. 2017 uh, Chianti Lazio was come from a very, very hot and dry year. So it's a, it's a stronger wine, it's a, it's a wine with more powerful, uh, more body, more structure. 2018 is a little bit more, for me, more classic and a little bit more easy to drink uh, because the year 2018 was uh, with more rain. So is, is the wine more ready, much more ready to drink now than seven. Okay, we've got several other questions coming in. Um, Steve Rappaport asked, has global warming had any effect on the harvest? Yes, you have to consider, for example, that uh, 
when I was a child, so many, many times ago. Many <laughs> others, <laughs> so. So uh, my, my, my winery, we do the harvest uh, uh, for my birthday, that is at the end of October. Oh. Now we do the harvest around 20, 25 of September. So in 30, 25, 30 years, 30, 35 years, we, is one month before then uh, in the past. Okay, thank you. And from Jennifer, Ariana, here's a question maybe for you to start with. What type of dinners are you cooking at this time of year? What time of? Of dinner. Um, a dinner, sir. Dinner, dinner uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this, this is a wonderful time for, for, for cooking because again, there's uh, a lot of seasonal, seasonal recipes. Now, in terms of desserts, it's the time when we switch from piazzata for l'uva, the one um, that uh, we, uh, we introduced you during the slideshow, and the castagnazzo. We'll tell you in castagnazzo on the next, uh, uh, on the next. <laughs> so I don't want to tell you too much because then uh, we'll be having, thanks to, to Kathy, she will be giving us the opportunity to have other webinars with you. And uh, the next will be uh, for sure uh, focus on the castagnettes as well. And then uh, we have the beans, now we have the olio noir, which it's just coming also. The olio noir is the very, very, very first day uh, of the olio noir. And so, you know, you, we have the cavolo nero, the black kale, the Tuscan kale, the black cabbage, and then we have the cavellini beans, and we have the chickpeas, and we have the roasted meats. So it's a lot of food. So it's the problem of, of this year, like this time of year is how to keep the, you know, like not, not to become too big <laughs> because yeah. there's so many specialties. Uh, so yeah. And then also the truffles, I forgot something very important. This is the time of the year when also truffles are growing um, and also any other kind of mushrooms. Actually, we began a few minutes before you, 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 you came online and uh, um, Kathy asked Francesco what he, did he did, do today and he replied I went to the woods and I found 13 porcini mushrooms which is a wonderful wonderful achievement we are very jealous I, I would very love good. to be in Francesco's kitchen in this moment <laughs> so I wonder if the, the mushrooms and olive oil there's a lot of foods for sure so uh, we have a couple of questions about um, Vansanto. Um, Dan asked if you also sell Vansanto. And then um, Catherine asked if the Vansanto is specific to Chianti or is it sold in other parts of Italy? Uh, for me? Yeah. You, you don't make Vansanto, do you? I don't make Vansanto because he, I don't have at the moment the real room to keep the, the grapes. To get dry, and then Vinsanto is very specific uh, for for Tuscany. Yeah, I think uh, Francesco a couple times at your home when we've been there for lunch, uh, we've had a little Vinsanto maybe from a friend with the yeah. biscuit. <laughs> yeah, so it's a, it's a real treat. We are always happy to have that. Um, another food question: What's the main um, meat in your area? So we have, allora, that's, that's an interesting question because the answer of this question is totally different right now from how it would be many years ago. And I'm telling you why. Farmers in the past, they were very poor, so uh, they couldn't afford beef and pork every day. So let's say if, if we had this webinar, let's say 40 years ago, which would be totally impossible because no computer, but let's pretend the answer would be Pigeons, doves, rabbits, and uh, uh, yeah, so all those birds in the end. And just for very special occasions, uh, people used to have pork and cows. Most of the farms, also Francesco's farm, I remember his father telling us that everyone had a couple of cows and a couple of pigs in the farms, but that would be for very special occasions. And then every single farm, including also Francesco's farm now, every, uh, has chickens and rabbits and uh, doves and pigeons too. That was part of the traditional cooking. Uh, nowadays, if you come to Tuscany, 
uh, let's say the majority part of the people eat a lot of pork and beef. Um, pigeon is less common. It became like a specialty you find on very rare occasion. Dove almost disappeared. Uh, rabbit is still eaten uh, by us locals and you find it in some of the trattoria, but not that often. So, well, and some wild, wild boar as well, yes? And the wild boar, it's true. <laughs> yeah, wild boar. Wild boar is a big specialty now. It's, it, now, let's say, you cannot really find wild boar in the summer, like in the, in, well, you, you find, but it's um, from like what, what they do now, now it's the hunting season. It's just started now in September and it will be going on until January. And so in, especially in this time of the year, we have also a lot of wild boar. So the wild boar ragu, which is delicious. <laughs> so I, I have um, two other things that are not really questions, but um, the first one from Cindy and, and Dan, who've been with us there in Tuscany said, we miss your wine, Francesco. I'll definitely be sending you an order. Now we know we can order directly. And then um, kind of related to that, Keith, who was with us also um, in, in uh, Chianti, he said, Francesco, shipped a case of wine to us in California. It arrived two weeks after shipment in great shape. I just want everyone to know that if you purchase from Francesco directly, it's super easy and it works well and it's very reasonably priced. So yay, Francesco, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do want to tell you what um, you could do if you want to make a donation and 100% of our donations today will go um, to be split between Ariana and Francesco. Um, and we'd suggest um, 10 to $20. You can pay with a personal check. A couple of people have actually sent me checks and said, put this towards several different webinars. So if that's easy, that's a possibility. Um, you could pay instantly with Venmo um, or PayPal or internationally TransferWise is an option. And we have um, the links for these on our website, www.european-experiences.com uh, forward slash payments. Um, I just want to say a little something about our trip in Chianti. Um, it's a seven night trip. We stay in the lovely wine village of Castellina in Chianti, um, not too far from where um, our group is today. Um, and it includes a variety of experiences. Uh, we visit the market in Panzano. We have a cooking class. We visit uh, Francesco's winery, um, as well as another winery. We go to Nora's goat farm and we hope to have a webinar with her at some point. Um, Ariana mentioned the olive mill. So with the variety of experiences, um, we really try to focus on the smaller villages, but we do have a fun day in Siena and also a morning in San Gimignano. Um, but I think also um, I would consider this to be a very personal trip because we meet so many local people. Um, we have a lot of friends and then Ariana has in, and Alessio have introduced us to other friends and we especially enjoy the opportunity to go to homes like Francesco's home. Um, and we have several home-based meals, which are just really, I think, a part of the whole experience there. And the groups are small, a maximum of 14 people. Um, we have two trips planned for next year, we hope. And we do have some spaces available in both weeks. And right now, um, if you're interested, I will hold a spot and we're not asking for a deposit now. We'll wait till after the first of the year. Um, I'm going to do a session after the first of the year um, that would be an overview, a more detailed overview of this trip. Um, we are now getting ready to announce seven more sessions um, this year. Um, we'll send an email this weekend and also announce on social media and we'll post on our website and we're going to stick with this time. I know it's not ideal for everyone, but with many of our presenters in Europe, <laughs> uh, we're trying to make it work, work for everybody. And if you register and can't come, um, you'll get a link to the recording. Um, we have a lot of interesting, diverse topics planned. Um, Ariana will do another webinar on the olive harvest. Um, we'll have Jennifer back um, to do a session on French cheese. Tommaso will be with us from Puglia. Um, and Carol Jackson, our friend in the Cotswolds, has got a very interesting um, uh, approach to a tour in Chipping Camden. And then um, we're going to do two um, programs on the holiday season. Jennifer and I will do one together on the holiday season in Provence. Um, and then after um, 
sometime during this next couple of months, um, I'm going to do an overview of our uh, trip in Provence and we'll do others later. So that is um, really what we had planned for today. Um, and we appreciate all of you being with us. So how would we say goodbye, you guys in uh, Tuscany? We'll say ciao, everybody. Ciao, presto. Thanks so Bye. much for being here. And thanks, Cassie, for, for giving us the opportunity to be, to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.